Today, I'm painting the same miniature for 10 minutes, one hour and 10 hours. Now, this video is inspired by Nerdforge and Miniag who did something similar to this. But seeing their videos, I wanted to do my own take. So here we go. The point of this exercise is to see how much can you get done given the time restraint. But even more importantly, how much of a difference will it make? Now, because I'm not insane, I have just one of this limited miniature, so I won't paint three of them like Scott did in his video. Instead, I'll build on top of what I already painted. And speaking of painting, our first 10 minutes are just about to start. At the end of each period, I would like to have something that resembles a finished model. Because of that, it's always a good idea to start with the head, as it is the center of attention. It's no wonder that I spent one and a half minutes just on the eye lenses. Right after that, I spent about five minutes base coating the armor and the shoulder pads. Given that I don't have the time to use two thin coats on everything, all the stuff after lenses was base coated quite sloppily. I even added another lighter layer to the helmet, tried to paint the gun, the nerglings, and a little bit of the bronze part. So as I already said, the intention is to have a finished model at the end of each stage. And did I succeed? Yeah... Uh... Not really. Mm -hmm. Some Warhammer miniatures tend to have too many features and this Plague Marine has a metric f ton of them. That's not always a bad thing, but making them look good in just 10 minutes is nearly impossible. But what about an hour? To be honest, seeing what I got in 10 minutes, I am not too sure that I can get something decent in an hour. But this time I actually put some thought into my plan and I decided to use the ultimate hobby cheat. The airbrush. Okay, that was fun as f but I also got a paint. And so the painting continues. It took me like two minutes to base coat all the green parts with an airbrush and I even added zenithal highlight with nurgling green, which I don't think even helped really. So I pretty much painted over most details, but that's not a big deal. The last thing I did with my airbrush is base coat the nurglings. So did the airbrush work? Well, it did help, but it wasn't quite the silver bullet I was looking for. So for people who say, oh, you used an airbrush, so of course it looks good. Well, no, it still takes time and effort. Anyway, after my airbrushing session of seven minutes or so, I still focused on the most prominent features. Obviously, the eye lenses had to be repainted because they looked like shit at this point. I also thinned my regular black paint to a wash consistency to apply it over the entire miniature. See, you don't need a dedicated shading product to wash your miniatures. So save your money. Then I proceed to highlight and build some volume on the most important features, like the gun, bronze parts, and of course the helmet. And you might ask, how was it different to my approach when I was painting for just 10 minutes? Aside from using my airbrush, I also had the time to base coat most features, but still not all of them. Now, this stage was supposed to take me an hour, but because I already spent 10 minutes on this mini, I painted for 50 more minutes to make it a full hour. I am much happier with the result this time, as I built some texture on the armor and most of the attention goes to the helmet and the gun. But still, let's be honest here, it still looks pretty shitty. Mm -hmm. If you compare the two results, it's easy to tell which one took longer. So the question is, will the nine more hours make the difference to make this a display miniature? Okay, so the approach here is totally different. Before actually starting, I realized that I never looked at the official box art. So I found it and now I know which parts will be what color. Fantastic. With the 10 minute paint job and the one hour paint job, I just wanted something that would look okay-ish on the tabletop. With nine hours left on the clock, I am able to aim for much higher quality to utilize all that time I have. As you'll see, however, I can't afford to go too slow as the final result might suffer because of it. 
but at this point I am painting this Plague Marine one part at a time, starting with his right leg. This is the third and final time that I am base coating it, and on top of that I separate all the elements by blacklining the miniature, meaning recess shading all the crevices for that clean and readable look. Which is quite weird when you talk about nurgly stuff, but hey as long as it looks good. Following that, the first layer on the armor is a slightly lighter and more saturated green. You can kinda see that I am applying it with these irregular brush strokes to create a textured look. And this will be the case pretty much for the entirety of the armor. Also notice how different is this quite light and saturated paint once it's dry. At times, you might get the impression that you go too light, but once the paint is dry, it always gets a bit more dull and darker. And because I have so much time left, I highlight all the edges, which will make the miniature nicely readable along with that black lining. After adding even more texture to the armor, it was finally time to layer up some non-metallic metal. You can notice that I tried to paint non-metallic metal in the previous stage as well, but I didn't have the time to carefully go from the darkest layer to build up those reflections. And once again, because I don't want to bore you to death, the entire process for this leg has been recorded and uploaded to Patreon, as well as other unedited footage. So if you're interested, check it out. As I paint the little tentacle and other small features, I realized one big problem with anything Nurgle related. You see, because all the minis are so different, they are a pain in the dick to batch paint. If you compare Plague Marines to, say, uh, regular Space Marines or Imperial Guard, the variation between each miniature is too big to batch paint effectively. With Vanilla Space Marines or Imperial Guard, all the features are fairly similar. So you can choose to paint all the leather parts at one time, then all metallics, then the armor, etc. With these guys, doing that is hard, because not everyone has the same weapons and the loadout and the same kinda corruption. However, they still make beautiful display models. The process from the right leg is repeated on the other one, and it's pretty apparent that it goes the right direction. In total, getting to this point took me around two hours. Painting the arms and the shoulder pads took me another two and a half hours, and then... I have no idea. <laughs> I still watched my time to complete the challenge, but I have no clue how much did I invest into the gun, the helmet and the backpack. Given that I had to repaint pretty much everything, I think that I did pretty okay job. I even repainted the lenses for the last time and made sure that the helmet is the lightest part of the armor to be the focal point of the miniature. When I started painting the backpack, I had only between 3 to 2 hours left to finish it, along with the nerglings and the base. So if there are some things that were a bit rushed, it's the nerglings and the base. I think that the final result is pretty okay. And now for the final comparison. When you compare the initial two versions, I think that the improvement is there, but it's definitely not as obvious. However, when you add the final version into the mix, those previous versions just can't compare. I mean, all of the stages were supposed to be complete in their own way, but seriously, I wouldn't be happy with them. The final third stage was the best, like hands down, even when you consider the 10 hours invested in it. Maybe if the miniature was more simple, there wouldn't be such a gap, but with all the features and different shapes, I could easily put even twice the amount of time into it. Now speaking of the shapes, can you see how I highlighted the arms, the helmet and the gun barrel? Well, if you are not sure why did I paint it like that, there is a very useful but surprising tool that you can use to learn it. And I actually talk about that in this video, so check it out, because believe me, it's quite surprising. And see you there!